Okay guys, uh, second movie review of the day, and this is the movie Rollerball um, from 2002, set in the distant future of 2005, and it is, I thought this movie was horrible. The um, person I was watching it with actually said it wasn't that bad, but I don't see how anybody could think that. This movie was just um, so stupid. And the camera work was horrible. I don't know what they were thinking with some of the stuff they did here. And it stars that guy from American Pie, Oz, Chris Klein. Um, he's like a worse Keanu Reeves. And just adds nothing. And this movie bombed, obviously. It was definitely 2002. They have like Rob Zombie playing the whole time. Um, performances by Slipknot. Um, pink I think POD but it was just definitely that era that time frame and I thought I would watch this movie because it supposedly has Shane McMahon make an appearance uh, Paul Heyman who actually does have a big role because um, he's the announcer for the games so Paul Heyman was fine but Shane McMahon seriously had no lines it just shows his face for like I don't know, five seconds, and that was it. And they they showed him, like, in the trailers and stuff. I remember this as a kid. I was like, wow, this movie looks awesome. I really want to go see it. And I'm glad I didn't because this movie really sucks. This movie sucks my roller balls. Um, I'm going to try and go off of memory here because this movie is just so absurd. I didn't want to write all this stuff down. And LL Cool J and Chris Klein... They, they're like football players or something. And there's this new game. Just keep in mind, it's set in 2005. There's this game in Europe where people um, play extreme roller derby. It's like roller derby, but with motorcycles and a bunch of bullshit. That's, it's stupid. And there's no scoreboard, so the game is completely pointless. And it's just... It's just a bad, bad idea... Um, the way they set this game up, the way they tried to make it, um, they tried to make it cool and extreme, and the people have weapons and stuff, but it's it's really pointless. So they're playing for this team and they're making money, but the guy who runs it wants to make the sport more dangerous, so he's actually hurting his own players in order to get ratings, and they're not allowed to leave, they're not allowed to quit. Um, eventually, they get tired of it. Um, they want to quit the team. They want to leave. Uh, Chris Klein is dating Rebecca Romaine Stamos, who's also on his team, so he doesn't want to leave her behind. Um, but eventually they make a plan to try and escape after... <laughs> okay, they go to another town to play their team, and that guy doesn't want to have the show on his network or something. So the guy who owns the team that Chris Klein pays for pulls out a gun in broad daylight in front of all these reporters and threatens to murder this man. And then he f f winds up dead the next morning. And they don't even put two and two together. Like, uh, maybe it was that guy who was threatening his life last night. Just horrible stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Okay, so... <laughs> Then they try to escape. LL Cool J, Chris Klein, they take off in the middle of the night on a motorcycle. They got some passports. They're going to escape. They, um, the team has people follow them around to make sure they don't try and leave, but they were able to trick these guys. Of course, they're on their tail. They're chasing after them through this desert, and the entire chase, uh, the chase scene is filmed in night vision. I'm talking about 30 minutes here of night vision. Horrible, horrible idea. Eventually, the bad guys catch up to him. Um, Chris Klein says, you go ahead, man. I'm going to stay. You escape. You got kids. So LL Cool J takes off. He makes this big jump across a bridge on the motorcycle, and he gets shot and killed. And that actually reminds me of something else. They're driving this motorcycle. Chris Klein's on the back. LL Cool J's driving it. And they're having a conversation while they're supposedly going 120 miles an hour. They're just talking to each other like it's nothing. While they're supposed to be going, like, super fast. Um, and they just, 
they do this weird cutaway thing with the camera where he'll be like um, looking down and depressed and then all, the, all of a sudden he's over here and then he's over here. They do that cutaway shit and it doesn't really happen in the beginning but halfway through the movie it's like the director said this is what I want to do from now on and then they just constantly do it over and over again. So it's like regular movie, night vision, and then cutaways all the time. Um, really bad. So Chris Klein, they take him back, and he's got to play the last game because they're threatening to kill Rebecca Romaine Stamos. And so he's playing the last game, and they want to kill him. They want to get rid of him, so they, they're they working with the other team. They're in cahoots to try and murder this guy, but he's still going out there and playing. Paul Heyman gets this thing where he's got to read it and says there's a change in the rules that um, now there are no more penalties or fouls. Like they were calling that shit before? They didn't call anything like that. They were blowing up motorcycles. It was ridiculous, and so now they're ch like changing the rules and penalties at the end when there's supposed to be no rules. Um, so what happens is the crowd sees how hard he's trying to play, even though they're trying to kill him. They start to realize something's up. The crowd starts chanting his name, Jonathan. Um, the other team who's given orders to take him out, and they're given like uh, spears and stuff, they actually help him and start fighting back against the TV producer and his bodyguards. So the people who were trying to kill him five minutes earlier are now fighting with him. It's so stupid. And at the very end, the ratings guy gets, I think he gets killed. And then his assistant who is, uh, oh my god, what's his name from Lost? He's the, um, he's the guy who is like the torturer expert in Iraq or something. Oh my god, what is his name? Starts with an S, I think. But anyways, he's in this movie and he's the assistant and he takes over and he says, well, now I'm in charge and you're gonna do what I say and then Chris Klein has this gun thing set up and he shoots him and kills him too. So that was it. Everybody's happy and that's the end of the movie. Like I said, this movie was horrible. I did not like anything about this movie. I can completely understand why it bombed. Um, they probably spent a ton of money bringing in all these bands and just trying to get these guys hyped up. And Chris Klein, he's just not a big draw. He's not a box office guy. And LL Cool J was in this and it just it just fell so far below anybody's expectations. The game was stupid. So this movie just didn't really work on a number of levels. So that's my review of Rollerball. I was just flipping around on Netflix and I saw it and I was like, wow, Paul Heyman was in this. I wanted to see this years ago. I'll give it a shot. And man, it was so bad. I felt like I just had to do a review of this movie. It's just so horrible. Plus, it is kind of wrestling related with uh, Shane McMahon and Paul Heyman. But um, that's it. That's my review of Rollerball. Hope you guys liked the video. Um, if you have seen this movie, leave your thoughts on it in the comments. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And thanks to everybody who has subscribed. And I'll be back uh, in a few hours with my last movie review of the day. So check that out too. And thanks for watching. Bye.